this is the first one that is all new material for Dog Fashion Disco on Razor to Wrist. Um, and it's a big deal for us, you know, this is our label. And believe it or not, uh, Razor to Wrist Records has been around for 10 years now. If if we weren't so psyched about the album, I would kind of be a little more, but we're, we think it turned out, you know, beyond expectation. So having that as, I mean, DFD, for all intents and purposes, uh, with all of the other bands that we have is, is you know, that that's the numero uno um, capitan. Um, so having... All the other projects released on our label was was definitely cool. Um, but now that we have no contractual obligations to other labels and we can just kind of do whatever we want, especially having DFD on our own label um, is a pretty big deal. So, yeah, we're psyched. Uh, what was new is kind of feeling the pressure again, which maybe pressure is a bad term, but we did adultery and that was such a huge hit. And then, you know, for various reasons, we decided we were going to call it quits. You know, in January of 07, we played that show in Sonar and we thought we were done. Like, literally, we were done. Um, and then we did the Indiegogo campaign and we did, a, uh, we did um, Sweet Nothings and Ad Nauseam back to back. And that was a lot of fun. But there didn't seem to be as much pressure with those for some reason. I don't, I don't, I don't know why. But for this one, um, you know, we're put, maybe we're putting a lot of pressure on ourselves. Um, it's, it's a very aggressive record. It's very heavy. It doesn't have as many stylistic changes as I think our older stuff did. Um, but I think that is, that's part of the newness too, and the development of the band. Yeah. I'm curious to ask Todd as to, you know, hey, what's this about? What's this about? Anything that he writes, it definitely comes from stands or means something you know he doesn't just scribble words on paper just to do it you know um he's his lyrics can be very thought-provoking he has in his notes section of his phone hundreds or thousands of ideas for things for stuff he whenever he hears something that like he thinks might be a song or anything like he'll just put it in the phone so you know, a phrase here, a phrase there, things that, that normal people like you and me just overlook and never think about again, you know, suddenly, you know, he'll have an, a whole song written about this thing that, you know, we just passed on the highway, you know, the Cottonwood River. That's a, that's an El Cripo song. That's a Cottonwood River is real. And we passed the sign on tour and he just, it just stuck in his brain and, and he wrote it down. And, you know, suddenly there's a song about that. I think that he captures sort of the feeling of the state of the world and the state of mind of a lot of people and things that are happening right now. Um, he always kind of does that, I, I think, in every album that he does that's, that's a new uh, release. Um, there's songs on there that are definitely involved with the you know, it speak in the state of the world and the people in the frame of mind at that time. And for a lyricist, I think that uh, who wants to get some shit off their chest, there is no better time than right now. Painter's price kisses your skin. Paint for love, red for sin. Storytellers fed the quill. Weave a web to trap and kill. A lot of the the writers of the songs in uh, in in dog fashion are um, Jason writes the uh, bulk of them. Uh, just you know, we're talking like framework and everything. And Jason is very very uh, well versed in. Um, and logic and recording programs. So, uh, at home, he, you know, and he's just a music factory. He just pumps out stuff. I mean, he's got hard drives with hundreds of songs on them that who knows if they'll ever even get heard, but you know, there's not a bad thing in there. So Jay spends a lot of time in front of his computer, writing music all the time. I mean, every time I'm with him, he's, he's showing me file after file after file of really cool stuff that eventually we'll get to. 
the guy's got a treasure trove of, of riffs and songs. I mean, probably which, you know, 90% of them will never see the light of day. But if we ever need something, he's like, oh, yeah, well, I got this and I got this and I got this. And then three hours later, I'm like, OK, something there is definitely going to work. I, you've got way too much stuff here. So let's just pick something. Those guys, man, they're 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 willing to just kind of let me write a lot of stuff now, which is I'm pumped about because it's my favorite part of the whole thing. I, I love writing the stuff and I'll just chisel away at it until it's something, you know, and, and not everything I write is great. You know, like I would say, I, I, I don't know, man. Like I, it, it most, there, there's a lot of swings and misses on my hard drive that will never be anything. So, um, you know, basically what happens is I'll come up with some stuff and I'll play it for Todd. And and if he thinks it's cool and wants to work with it, then, then we give it a shot, you know? And if, if he's not into it, then I put it in another folder and I play it for him six months later and suddenly he'll like it. <laughs> That's happened more times than I can tell you. Um, it depends on people's moods, man. You know, like, and, and the truth is that I can write the coolest guitar part in the world. And if it doesn't spark something creatively in Todd to write a great vocal part for it, then it doesn't matter. Like it's, you know, it, it just, it's, it's a very symbiotic relationship. You know, it, it has to be that way. So, you know, I, I, I don't take anything, anything that he or any of the other guys write for granted. He and I have a good Lennon McCartney relationship where, um, although I guess that's a bad comparison because we get along really well, but um, we uh, we have a rhythm and um, it's a rhythm that we've built over, you know, 20 years. Um, and it's kind of like, Jason's pretty, he's, he's, he's pretty, he's, he's very easy to work with in the aspect that, um, and I think both of us have this now because we know we're not going to hurt each other's feelings, but it's like, yeah, I don't think that's working. All right, let's move on. Where before it would be in, in the old DFD days, we'd be writing in the same room and literally um, it would be a miracle if we weren't attacking each other physically and verbally um, while the writing process was going on drumsticks flying by my head or me like, you know, storming out of the room or everyone's got their hands up. But now it's just like, hey, I have, I have most of a song. Here it is. What do you think? Cool. Let's work on it. Okay. I might need a little part, your help with a part of the bridge. Cool. What do you think about this? Awesome. Bam. We're off and running. There's almost no friction. I mean, occasionally we'll disagree on maybe the direction of, of a song or a transition or a part or something relatively minor that we, you know, we're so old now. It's like, why... <laughs> Why bitch about the stupid crap? This is the stuff that Todd and I used to like throw down about when we were teenagers and in our 20s. But now it's all for the betterment of the music. It's in service of the music. Can't wait to see how you did that. On 12. Oh, you're just going. Sounds like you're going with the Woody. Oh, because the strings coming on off are going whang, 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 whang. Oh, I hear it. I hear something else. That's what I kept hearing. Yeah. It's like whang, whang, Yeah, that's whang. not intentional. Oh. I kept, it sounded like you were going, ooh, do that it, like, ooh, like rolling. It sounded like I'm good. good. No, no, it is, uh, it is two chords. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, now I can not hear it. Sounds like you're doing some weird arpeggiation. It sounds like I'm doing cooler shit than is actually happening. That's crazy. Can't wait for the guitar player magazine to come out on mm -hmm, this one. Mm -hmm. We'll have to put that in the tablature. <laughs> Each band kind of, I hope, has its own voice. So, you know, like a like a polka dot record starts with keyboards. So you like the frames, the framework of of all of Get Possessed happened you know, basically on the keyboard and then you fill in the holes with a guitar and, you know, the, the opposite of that happens with the DFD stuff. I don't, I'm not a big fan of sending data files back and forth. I much prefer working, you know, in person. 
So uh, spring of this year rolled around and Jay hopped on a plane, Todd picked him up and we spent a weekend here doing pre-production for Cult Classic where you know, I had my electronic drums and we just recorded many tracks, hung out, uh, drank too much, ate too much, stayed up too late. Uh, but the three of us had a great time finally getting an opportunity to work on new material again, which is, which is what I, I love to do. It's one of my favorite things in the world is working on new music and, and uh, you know, recording it and going through the whole process. I, I absolutely love it. So was I excited? Yeah, yeah, very excited to work on new material finally. So uh, basically, like Jason will sort of, uh, or Tim, uh, will kind of do this as well. Tim will always c contribute um, like full song ideas. Um, and then Todd will uh, send over some guitar riffs to Jason, you know, like that he has in mind. And Jason will incorporate those into things. It is still, I still look at it like it's, it's their project. They're the, you know, they're like the, the head guys there, you know, and I'm just kind of coloring different things this way. Um, and also the band's been around since 95, you know, so, you know, I, I toured after adultery and then started again in what, 2013, but the library is so huge that you're, you're a part of something that's bigger, you know. There were a lot more contributions and a lot more ideas um, that I was able to throw out on this one than, um, I had even in the past um and you know just kind of goes from there it's it's it, you know it's something starts in one way and then by the time it's finished it's just usually completely different we all have our specialities you know we lean on jay and todd a lot for the music because that's that's you know jay is an outstanding guitar player is a great musician classically trained cellist um, knows what he's doing and he and Todd work really well together and have worked well together for a long time. Um, my forte is kind of, you know, arrangements and intros and outros and kind of seeing what works and maybe what doesn't work. Uh, Tim uh, contributes a fair amount of music uh, in his own right as well. Uh, so from, from that perspective, what was flowing out of all of us was familiar. Like SNL or something like that. Like you're a writer going in, you know, um, that's the show dfd is the band you know you can kind of that's kind of how it is but maybe you can put your little spin and your little voice on certain things that are here you know if you know if something doesn't make it it's totally cool you know it's it's just you know doesn't get doesn't get in there gets rejected it's kind of that same way so i look at it as something bigger you know than me so in some you know instances um there's an old axiom in this business a record is never finished okay uh, no album you've ever listened to is ever finished. There's just a point at which the songwriter, the musicians, the producers, everybody just says, okay, we're just going to stop because, you know, and Jay and I are guilty of this. We could nitpick the shit out of this until we're dead. I could go back in and constantly be re-recording little parts and Jay would be doing little noodles here and there to fill in little gaps and the album would never get, never get finished. Um, so you just, you just kind of choose when to stop. I cut it off. I die.